Dundee United and Celtic can both come up with a whole lot more than they produced on the opening weekend. The champions are back at Tannadice, where three months ago they sealed their third title on the trot. The live action is an hour away. Time that the club did that. Performance surprise you? Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, I think sometimes, no matter how often you you uh, tell players that uh, a team that's coming up from the lower division um, are a good side, uh, then I think sometimes uh, way down inside them somewhere they think, well, it's only a first division side. And uh, you know we we underestimated Hamilton uh, to our peril, obviously. And I mean Hamilton winning again yesterday just proves they're a decent side. What have you been focusing on in training ahead of this game today? Our defending. Um, you know we defended well last season, and believe it or not, we've done a lot of work in this pre-season on defending. Um, although you wouldn't have known it watching the game last week. Um, and you know I've made two changes in the back line because I feel that. There's certain things we need to do better today, um, and hopefully those lads who come in, um, you know, manage to retain their place by putting on a good uh, performance. Yeah, you brought in Kovacevic, Gary Kenneth, and David Robertson. I guess that uh, selection has been influenced by the performance on Monday night. Yeah, and also by Celtic a little bit. You know, I feel that uh, you know Kovacevic is, is a you know really good one-on-one -on -one, uh, defender, and uh, I think we'll need that against McGeady today. Uh, Gary Kenneth, I think, is a really good passer of the ball. I think we need to retain possession today. I also felt that in the, even in pre-season matches, we didn't look as much of a goal threat from midfield as I would have liked. Uh, and Prince has gone off the boil a little bit the last couple of games. So David Robertson comes in and hopefully does what he does best, and that's get in the box. We wish you well today, Craig. Thank you. Loan from Cardiff. The little live wire midfielder was hugely influential last season, and he's happy to stay on at Tannadice. We spoke to my agent, I went to Ireland holiday with my missus for a week and a half and then we came back and I had an idea that I was on the cards and then once it happened I was happy and now I've, I really enjoyed my football and once you're happy playing football then you don't, you don't care where you are really. Do you think you'll have more goals to offer? I must reflect on the fact you scored only one goal last year but it was the Kleiser Bank goal of the season. Yeah, yeah I think I need to add goals from the game, I think uh, that's what was lacking last season and hopefully I can get a few more half decent goals. Not exactly the starts of the season you were hoping for. How do you go about lifting yourselves for Celtic this weekend? I think it's quite easy for the boys, you know, lifting ourselves against one of the big tail one. Plus it's our first game at home and I think we have we have to show a lot better what we done the other night, you know, we were we were awful from the very start, so I think you'll see a lot better done the night it comes Sunday. Can you put your finger on why the performance was so flat against Hamilton? Just from the very start we were flat and then we even even the last 10 minutes, even though we created one or two chances, they were only really from set pieces. We never really created enough from open play. How would you assess the strength of the squad, given the fact you've lost a few key players? Noel Hunt, of course, left, Christian Calvarez and Mark Kerr. Yeah, we've lost three big boys, as far as you know. They were three starters nearly all last season. But I think the Gaffer's brought in some decent players. He's brought in a lot of competition up front. We have a lot of competition in the field. And the defence is steady, Eddie, which it was all last season. I guess, in a way, having... The champions come to Tanadice could be a good game for you, a good opportunity to bounce back and show your real form. I think we proved against them like the last game of last season that we're just as good, you know, when we play well. And I think we'll have to play, if not a little bit better, to beat them because we played so well last last time and they still got three points. You'll need to show a huge amount of improvement to get a result, but you're capable, I guess? Yeah, I definitely think we're capable of playing a lot, lot better than that. I a hundred times better than what we played against Hamilton and I think we'll have to if we're going to get any sort of results against the big boys. He has a big influence with Oflant on how Dundee United play and Celtic will mark him down, John, as a danger? Yeah, they will and I, I like this boy because uh, one thing he does do is he gets, he really gets about the pitch and he has a right go, you know, and players like Barry Robson, uh, Paul Hartley, whenever they played against Celtic, they, they saw it as an opportunity, you know, and they, they would get in people's faces and make a right nooses on themselves and be the best player on the pitch for that particular day. And this is what this lad will do, you know. He'll, he'll, he'll have a lot of respect for the Celtic players, but for when he crosses over that white line today, he'll be firing into people. And this is the sort of game that he really, really plays well in these old firm games. Half the back four has changed, and maybe Lee Wilkie will feel a little bit fortunate that he mm. keeps his place alive. I would imagine Craig Levine's had a few sharp words with him. Yeah, I'm sure he has, and I'm sure they've done a bit of work this week on the back four. Craig said they've done some work pre, you know, pre, pre season or prior to that game last week. But um, sometimes in, in one match, it all turns on its head. But you know, Lee Wilkie's got a, not so much a point to prove, but 
he's got to try and shore up that defence. He's got uh, Vinegar of Hesseling, who's good in the air, good in movement. But Donald, who's like a little wasp around your legs and everything else like that. And that's the last thing he wants is a quick striker against him. But he's got enough experience of playing against uh, McDonald and playing against Celtic in the past to know that he's got a, a big responsibility in terms of getting that back four together and making that back four very strong. They only conceded 14 league goals here last season and four of those were to Celtic. But, you know, they've, they'll, they'll feel pretty confident that, you know, they can get back to basics and get back to where they were last season. Five that lost miserably at Hamilton. Michael Kovacevic and Gary Kenneth come into the back line in place of Sean Dillon, who drops to the bench, and Darren Dodds, who misses out altogether. David Robertson is given a start too, and he should add a goal threat. Prince Boabon makes way. The New Look Strike Force keep their places. Warren Feeney on loan from Cardiff, and Roy O'Donovan on loan from Sunderland. Yeah, it's 4 4 2 for United. Levine was unimpressed with his back line last week. And with Kovacevic and Kenneth coming into defence, it adds quality, in my opinion, and an even greater physical presence in the side. Flood drops back slightly to the right of the midfield diamond, where his industry is better suited. David Robinson will give more of an attacking threat in behind the two strikers who lacked real service last week. Well, Gordon Strachan is forced to make two changes. Lee so Mark Wilson starts against his former club. Another ex tanadai's favourite, Barry Robson, has been ill this week, so he's only on the bench. But there's a timely return from injury for Shumsky Nakamura. Jan Venegor of Hesseling scored on both visits to Tanadai's last season, while Scott McDonald hit a Celtic Park hat-trick against Dundee United. Barcelona starlet Mark Crossas is on the bench, but Ben Lovens isn't involved. Well, Celtic's 4-4-2 differs from United's in that it's much flatter across the midfield area, but they do get with that far more width. And in McGeady and Nakamura, you have two players who can exploit it really well. Of course, just in behind them as well, you've got Henkel and Wilson, and they accentuate that width with overlapping runs. Up front, no room yet for Samaras, but his time will come. It's still Jan Fenegor of Hesslink and Scott McDonald who get the nod. Dundee United made a desperate start to the season, almost a full start. They were rolled over by an impressive Hamilton Aki side on Monday night. And they need to respond today. Two big centre halves. Okay. All the best, enjoy All the, the game, captains, guys. Lee Wilkie leading out Dundee United. And Stephen McManus leading out Celtic. Well, that's it. Celtic have a terrific record here at Tanadice. They've won on 12 of their last 13 visits and they clinched the title here in May. The man from Japan is back. Shinsuke Nakamura has recovered from a groin injury two seasons ago. He scored a hat trick on this ground. Mark Wilson knows these parts well. He left at Dundee United for Celtic a couple of years ago, but his time in Glasgow has been hampered by injury. Roy O'Donovan grew up in Ireland supporting Celtic. Now he gets to play against his boyhood heroes. Gordon Strachan Celtic won the title here in May, and Strachan began his playing career in this city across the road at Dundee. Charlie Richmond is the man in charge. Well, after reaching a cup final and jostling for Europe last season, Dundee United have raised the bar. The bar is always very high for Celtic. Only two teams have won both their games so far in the SPL. New Boys Hamilton, Old Boys Rangers. Celtic will be eager to follow suit as they pursue a fourth successive title. Even in the opening weeks of the season, they will want to match or better Rangers results. In Glasgow, you just don't want to fall behind. Willow Flood. Kovacevic and David Robertson's header forcing Boric to tip it over. This is precisely why David Roberts in the team today because he gets himself in the box there next to the two strikers. He is a goal threat. Yeah. 
Wilson. McGeady. McGeady giving David Robertson the runaround. Oh, and Zaluska. Less than convincing as McGeady's effort fizzed towards him. It did, and it was because it came through a ruck of players, I think, that had just caught Zaluska off guard a little bit. Mark Wilson. Replacing the injured Lee Naylor today. McGeady. That's lovely. Paul Wilson. Nakamura. And he sets it up for Hartley. And it's taken a nick. But Celtic are in front early in the second half. And Paul Hartley will claim his first SPL goal to the hoops. That was quite scrappy in the end. It all came initially from Wilson down the left hand side. Does so well to get there. Overlapping. Nakamura thinks about a straight. Paul Wilson. Nakamura. And he sets it up for Hartley. And it's taken a nick. But Celtic are in front early in the second half. And Paul Hartley will claim his first SPL goal to the hoops. That was quite scrappy in the end. It all came initially from Wilson down the left hand side. Does so well to get there. Overlapping. Nakamura thinks about a strike and tees up Hartley. He takes a real deflection. At that point, Kenneth comes out trying to stop the shot from Hartley. O'Donovan. And O'Donovan in. And he's been tripped. No penalty, though. As O'Donovan went to ground, Charlie Richmond had a look and said that's not a penalty. Well, this is a big call. O'Donovan tucks that one back. Not oh, much contact. Caldwell comes sliding in. See, for me, Caldwell gets nothing on the ball. To me, that's got to be a penalty. has a little go at him. So the first substitution. Charlie Richmond, replaced by Ian Brines. Granger will give Conway his first touch. It's a lovely return from Granger for Conway. And he's sneaked it across, and Santaza has equalised! this left-hand side for Dundee United when they've been attacking the second half. Conway does so well, but I'll tell you what, Sundazza's going to score goals for Dundee United. It's three or four times now he's got himself into that position, just ahead of Boric twice. Boric managed to get there first this time. Boric couldn't get there first. Brown. Wilson. McManus is in there. And Scott McDonnell! He's put it wide. What a miss. Well, Scott McDonald eventually gets his chance. It's a good ball back in there for McManus. Now he has to get that on target. It went toe to toe at Tannadice and it turned into quite a contest. I say it turned into because the first half was pretty disappointing. That was one of the few serious efforts on goal from Davy Robertson. No penalty here for. Lee Wilkie and Danny Granger fired his efforts over the top, but that wasn't their strongest penalty claim. This was Aidan McGeady at the tail end of the first half. It took Celtic 40 minutes to get a serious shot in on goal, touched away by Zaluska. Six minutes into the second half, Paul Hartley's first SPL goal for Celtic. Had them in front with the aid of a deflection of Gary Kenneth. No penalty for Roy O'Donovan. He couldn't believe it, and there were a few thousand Dundee United fans here who shared that view. But they couldn't be denied here when Francisco Sandaza, the Spanish sub, made it count at the near post from Conway's cutback. 
And Craig Levine's anger may have subsided after that penalty claim waved away. I say it may have. <laughs> Here's the league table. And uh, Dundee United getting their first point of the season, which moves them off the foot of the table. And uh, Celtic denied 100% record. Four out of six for them. Craig Levine with Stuart Lovell. Craig, that was much more like the Dundee United we're used to seeing. Were you pleased with your players today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the contrast between the performance today and last week was just night and day. And uh, you know, I was I was very hopeful that um, that we'd put on a decent show today, and uh, we contributed to what I thought was a fantastic match. Yeah, would that sort of back up your assertion that Monday night was just a bad day at the office? Well, I hope so. I mean, uh, I don't think you can ever see. I mean, last season I could count on one hand the amount of poor performances we had. I didn't expect once early uh, this season, but we got it, and uh, the, the lads have bounced back in a terrific manner. I thought we, we played the game the right way. We tried to pass the ball, created uh, good goal-scoring opportunities, particularly in the second half. And uh, we deserved the point today. And, and if uh, Lady Luck had been with us, we might have uh, got a little bit more. It was noticeable you went to the back four that managed a, a clean sheet at Celtic Park in March. Was that in your mind the fact that you'd, you'd done well against them defensively in the past? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I made changes because of, I said at the start of the game for two reasons: one, a performance on Monday night, and secondly, um, the individuals performed well against those same Celtic players. So that was the idea. I thought we defended very well today, and uh, saying that, I mean, when we needed uh, Lucas Zalishka, he made a, a wonderful save, and. Um, yeah, that, that looked much more like the unit that I expect. Dundee United are fast gaining a reputation as being on the receiving end of some very unfortunate decisions as regards the referee. It appears that you were denied a stonewall penalty in the second half. What was your view on that? Well, I haven't seen it, but you told me it was a stonewall penalty. <laughs> um, what did I say? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to run out of money at some point. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I feel really sorry for the fans and the players, you know, I mean, we don't deserve that. We didn't deserve it. I mean, if it's because I speak out and speak my mind, then, then that's a terrible, terrible thing to happen. Terrible thing to happen. If that's why, then that's a terrible thing to happen. Um, I just want to get a fair crack of the whip, that's all. You must have been pleased with the character of your players because they didn't let that decision affect them. They still plugged on and deservedly got an equaliser. Uh, yeah, I think we deserved it. Celtic had chances as well. I mean, we, they, they could have won the game at, uh, at one nothing. Um, you know, it was a, a real blow not to get a penalty. We might have missed the penalty, you never know, but the point being that it was a penalty. And we had a, a clear uh, foul right on the edge of the box not long after it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those things sometimes go against you. And I'm just hoping that uh, with a normal amount of luck, we'll get those decisions in our favour one day. And a couple of inspired substitutions. You brought on Sandassa, who looks as if he's got a, a, an eye for goal, and Craig Conway, who's been out a long, long time, and he came back and, and, and made the, the goal for Sandassa. Yeah, well, it, it's almost like two new players. I mean, uh, Conway's been out, had one problem after another, and hasn't really had an opportunity to play football recently. And uh, I had planned to wait another week, but he did really well in the reserve game on, uh, on Tuesday. And uh, it was great to see him back because he's he's, he gives us something that we don't have. Um, Sandaza, I think, once we get him fit, um, I think will be a, a real asset for us. I mean, he has got an eye for goal. And uh, he, he's a big lad, a willing worker. And, um, you know, I think that the supporters have taken to him. But I must say that the two, I thought uh, Feeney and, and O'Donovan worked their socks off. You know, I mean, they, they really ran uh, for, the, for the whole period that we're both on the pitch. Um, and I think that uh, allowed Sandaza to get a little bit more room when he came on. Um, but I took his goal well and uh, overall I'm pleased with our performance and that's, I must stress, our performance, I'm really pleased with that. You lost some key players in the summer but you seem to have replaced them particularly well. Are you happy with the state of your squad? Yeah, I've said that we're happy. I mean, this one swallow doesn't make a summer so, you know, this game, um, you know, for me is a huge improvement on what, what happened last week but I, I said on paper we look better, on paper. I mean... Uh, I thought we were playing on paper on Monday night. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I thought today was much more like us. That there's good strength and depth. I can take off somebody as experienced as uh, Warren Feeney and put on, um, you know, Sandaza. And, and I can put somebody like Conway on as well. Last season I was in the position where I was putting youngsters on um, late in games to try and help us win matches. So all credit to the players, our supporters as well. They deserve that after, after the, what we served up to them on Monday. Thanks very much, Craig. OK, thanks.
Dundee United still haven't beaten Celtic for nine years, but that's a performance and a result here from which they take a lot of credit 1-1. And it was a great second half, wasn't it? John Hartson, United might have had the chance to equalise had they be given a penalty. Charlie Richmond said no after this challenge from Gary Coldwell on Roy O'Donovan. Penalty or no penalty, John? Well, yes, penalty. Um, Don, he takes him out there, takes his foot. He doesn't get any of the ball. Um, it's a lunge and it's a penalty. Referee should give it. There he is there. He's got perfect view of it. It's a stone waller, but um, uh, Gordon says he shouldn't have got to that uh, to where he was because it was a foul. But with Donovan and Phoebe... Do you, do you take that point, that, that, that the play should have been stopped earlier on? Um, I never really looked at that challenge, to be honest, with the one before it that much. I'm, I'm obviously, we could... I mean, th those, I mean th th those, those happen all the time, don't they? Players yeah. bumping into each other, bumping Donovan off each other. Donovan those and Feeney not to be given a lot. Yeah, but, but that, that's, but that's, like that's any, the key moment. It's like any striker would do. If you can't win the ball, it'll make right. sure that the, other, that the centre half doesn't have a clean head or doesn't win the ball as well. So, you know, it's, 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 it's six of one and half because, of another. Because physically, McManus and Caldwell... Have a look at this, John. This is the penalty again. Yeah, it's a penalty. Referees, referees should give it, and I can't understand why he hasn't given it. Uh, only the referee can answer you that question, but um, it should have been given, and uh, you know, Craig Levine and Dundee United have a right to be very aggrieved at that, because it's, uh, it's a stone wall of well, I, say, I say, no way that's a penalty. Why not? No, I'm just joking. It's a stone wall penalty. <laughs> I can't say that. Now, like, I've done that before myself many times, when you go to block the cross, and in the end of the day, you end up taking the whole lot. The only thing I'd say is that, is that he just goes down rather sort of you know, gently, that may have put a sort of doubt in the referee's mind, but it's, it's the way that he goes down. Yeah. And so I think, well, was it? You know, I'm not too sure. And if there's any doubt in the referee's mind, he's not going to give it. But we've had so many times to look at it. And the more you look at it, the more you say, yeah. how can he not give that as a penalty? And Craig Levine, after what he was through at Ibrox at the tail end of last season, is thinking, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, did, he really didn't want to answer that question really earlier on. But uh, I suppose we can say it sitting here. You know, we can say it's a terrible decision from the referee and it should have been given. But. Craig, if he doesn't know by now, you know, he'll never know. He keeps getting fined, but, um, you know, it's a certain penalty. I think if, you, if you're going to go to the ground in the box as a defender, you've got to win the ball or block the ball. Yeah. You can't make any contact before you make contact with the ball, or even if, like Gary Coleman, it doesn't make contact with the ball at all, it makes contact with the player. You've got to be totally 100% certain that you are, you're not going to give away a penalty, you're not going to play the man, you're going to play the ball. The United, big contributions here made by first Granger, then Conway and Sandaza. Well, he looks a finisher. It's, it's slightly behind him as well, isn't it? He has to sort of hook it. But what Sandaza does really well here, he pins Mick. He's pinning him there. He's holding him. There he goes. You know, and uh, it's a great finish because it's slightly behind him and he's had to hook it in. But Conway, you think he's going nowhere there, but he manages to get the cross in. First of all, you've got to stop the cross. Secondly, it's, uh, it's, it's a neat finish, though. And as I say, he was, he got, they got the just, just the rewards there. And if Craig Levine gets him fit enough to be starting with him, uh, then that could be a big difference yeah. for Dundee United. Oh, yeah, he made all the difference when he came on because he was a pest, he was a threat. Mm. And he got about people and you know, he's, he, he moves the ball well on the ground. Like I say, he's a wriggler. He holds the ball up well, brings people in the paint, but gets in the box well. And, and as John says, it's, it's a centre-forward's job to get across that near post. Uh, Hinkle doesn't do well. Corwell, you think, well, he's got a block that, you know, the ball comes across in between Corwell and the, and the near post. And then big big Mick, um, McManus, it allows Sandazza to come in front, and Sandazza does well to come in front. And even though the ball's bobbling and it's around mm. him, he still hooks it in. You know, the one that nice finish. We saw Boric afterwards go bananas at Hinkle, because Hinkle turns his back on the ball. It's a great ball by Granger over the top. He turns his back on the ball and allows yeah. Conway to get into that position. But good play by Dundee United. Scott, happy with a point today? Um, yeah, the way the game went, I think we're. We played well enough to earn the point. Um, I think it probably would have been unfair on either side to have lost the game, but uh, we're happy with our point against Celtic, yeah. especially after last week's result. Yeah, I think that's the, the main point that needs to be stressed. Uh, one of Dundee United's poorest performances since Craig Levine came here as manager. What did he say to you after the game, and, and what's changed in, the, in just in the past few days? Um, I think probably what he said was best kept <laughs> indoors, but um, he, he obviously wasn't happy and he expressed that to us, and uh, he just said that he wanted a lot better today and I think he got that. So, Just your second competitive game for Dundee United, how do you feel you're settling in? I'm really enjoying it, um, I'm glad to be playing at this level, this is the reason I came to Dundee United to play against teams like Celtic, and the atmosphere was great and I really, I really enjoyed it, so it's great. And your role in the team, Dundee United play with this diamond formation, you play in front of the back four, does that suit your style, or something that you enjoy doing? Um, I, I like to get forward to be honest with you, but, um, uh, as long as I'm playing, I really don't mind. Uh, I've, I've went into that position, and although I don't think I played that great on Monday, I think I've done a bit better today. Obviously, because Celtic were attacking a lot more, I had a lot more to do. So, 
uh, I quite enjoy playing there, yeah. Mark Kerr was one of Dundee United's key players over the past few seasons. Big shoes to fill? Um, maybe. maybe um, I don't know how many people would compare me to Mark Kerr. Uh, maybe some people would see similarities, but I don't, I don't really see them myself. I, I do like to get forward, and I don't know if, if, I, if you yourself would compare me to him. But, uh, like I say, he was a good player, and he's moved to a good club, so it's nice comparisons there. When you look at the fact you've only played a couple of games, but there was... A lot of people are suggesting that Dundee United are serious contenders for third place. Do you feel as if you maybe need to hit the ground running this season to get yourselves up there in contention? Yeah, well, uh, I know the club had a good start last season. I, mean, I think when beaten for five games, or five straight wins, I think it was, and then they finished the season not so well, but they finished uh, fifth in the league, and that was all because of a good start as well. So this season hadn't been so good, um, but if we can get the momentum going and get more wins, then we can hopefully do that. Get third. Well, for a fine performance today, Scott, you've got the nod for the Clydesdale Bank Man of the Match. Well done. Thanks very much, Stuart. Cheers. Cheers.